how do you start on this journey of creating a data culture by enabling employees to work with, with data? Um, we, we see this as a, as a challenge for some of our customers to make that journey um, sustainable over time. And the, the cultural work that needs to be done to ensure that data literacy becomes part of the culture um, shouldn't be um, underestimated, um, and I think is a, a shared challenge for everyone. So there are also some very significant challenges that are coming back in survey research of what are the barriers we all need to overcome in our organizations to create a data culture. Um, these stats were taken from a new Vantage Partners uh, survey that was published at the beginning of this year. Um, it's a three-year running survey, and it gives you a, a viewpoint into um, just how meaty this discussion can be. So I will let you do a brief introduction, and I'm going to ask that um, you share with us your favorite Alation feature as part of your introduction. Hi, uh, my name is Minna Karha. I'm head of data at FINE. <clears throat> I started two years ago in the organization, and the role was completely new, and it was actually quite exciting to see how how different expectations different uh, colleagues had towards this, this role. So I also heard every now and then that, hey, now you are the head of data, so I can come with any data-related question to you, and you know all the answers. But uh, so um, luckily, we now have the data catalog, so I don't have to be the, be the one who has, has all the information in, in my head. Uh, we started with the with, uh, catalog. A year ago, we did a, a short proof of concept, and then we decided to go for Alation, and we started the actual implementation project in April this year, and now we are kind of uh, in a good speed, but there's still a lot of content to be added and, and a lot of users to be onboarded. I would say my favorite feature in Alation is the search feature, because that was also the starting point, that how can you find data as easy as you can find hotel or, or, or flight information from Google. So, so I really like the search feature. And Mina's early in the journey, still counting in months, Mina, or, or under a year at least. <laughs> uh, and so I, I think there's a comparison and, and contrast here, which is interesting when, when, when talking about data culture, as well as just adoption of the, of the catalog. Um, a little bit of additional background that I think might be useful is when we talked on the phone about this panel, you shared some of the um, AI and machine learning and analytics use cases that define some of the business outcomes you're supporting with the data catalog. And just to give the folks context as to what type of analytic initiatives you're addressing, maybe you could share one of those use cases. Mina, you know, your projects are, are very different being a part of the, the airline industry, so you mind yes. sharing an yes. example with us? For us, definitely, the, the benefit is knowing what data we have total in the company, because uh, <clears throat> each individual operational process, of course, what they know what data they have, and they are continuously uh, improving the op operations from that perspective, but now that we actually have a wider view on, on, on what data is there in the total inventory, we have been able to combine data sets that, that we didn't combine before, and, and one good example was that we combined uh, weather data together with um, runway capacity data and flight data, and we, were, we are now able to predict delays uh, that are caused by weather. So by using also weather forecast data, we are able to <coughs> predict that there is a certain propensity that this, this uh, day these flights might be too much, uh, too much delayed. And then we also see the ripple effect of, of that. So if a specific flight is delayed, it means that the aircraft comes late, so the next um, leg for that aircraft when it needs to leave again, that will also have an effect. And the crew might be moving to another flight, which will also have an effect because the flight can't leave, obviously, if the crew is not there. And it also has the uh, passenger and the transferring passenger and, and passenger experience um, well, effect. So, so by being able to combine different data sets, we can actually see a wider kind of a, a string of, of things happening and, and can take right right decisions. So when you're talking to your em employees and they, they ask, why are we making this in investment in, in, 
in data culture and trying to change our culture into new tools. What are the what are the two or three criteria you point them to as to how you're defining data culture? What does this what does data culture mean? Well, for us, I would say it's it's uh, simply two things. So so one is um, the data literacy, and and specifically what that means is that that whoever is using a piece of data needs to understand where that data came from, where it's originated, and how much can I trust it, so what type of decisions can I really make based on this, this piece of data. And then the other, other part is having the, the right time access to relevant data always on, on my role, so that I have, I have it fast there when I need it, I don't need to, need to search it. I promised at the beginning of today when I, I introduced myself that we're going to keep it real. So I am sure that this journey to building data culture is not, not always smooth. I know that from some of the survey data, but I'm assuming in your own organizations it happens too. What have been some of the larger challenges that you've faced? One is obviously that it hasn't been easy to, to um, involve everybody to, to join the game. So, so um, uh, kind of what's in it for me, the motivation we still need to figure out. Uh, for, but we have kind of started from a small team that, that can and is willing to work together and kind of by example then, then build from that. And the, the other thing is that uh, because in airline in industry it's the most of the core data or the, the uh, data that is in the core, core of the business is, is coming outside from our own systems and outside from our own, own organization because of the nature of, of the um, uh, business that, that obviously uh, all, all most airlines work together and, and kind of uh, you might buy, buy a finance ticket and, and then actually it might be American Airlines that is actually operating the flight, for example. So there's a really, really tight network, which also means or, or when you search uh, flights, you don't go separately to, to Lufthansa web page and then go to some other, other airlines web page to look for, for prices or, or for flights. You use those kind of a central services. So that means that the data is, is everywhere. And it has been also challenging for, for some of that data to actually find the business knowledge within our organization now that we have been bringing it visible. So that when, when you really have specific questions like why does this piece of data now look like this? Why is there this type of change happened? It's very difficult to find a person in the organization who can say, yeah, that's happened because of this. And then it's kind of a Learn, learn and do and, and then, then learn from mistakes and then correct, that's, that's kind of... <laughs> so I, I think this highlights the importance of, of maybe s small wins and quick wins and building on top of that. And we had a little bit of discussion earlier today uh, with Guido and the, the Daimler team about how just delivering a, a data cake <laughs> might be a way to celebrate those those small and, and quick wins and, and generate momentum. I mean, we talked a little bit about some A-B testing, um, an A-B testing project that you had the marketing team undertake. Um, I think it might be useful for the crowd to hear a little bit more of, of you know, one of those quick wins from you that helped to get uh, more excitement around the possibilities um, in creating data culture and how the data catalog might contribute. Yes, yeah, so, so definitely it helps when you have something very concrete to show that this is the, the old world and this is, this is what, what it can be. So we did a very simple um, uh, A-B testing on a marketing campaign where we, we used machine learning recommendations to, to one target group and then the other target group was just made in the old, old way. And, and we could see the, well, obviously the conversion rate was rel relatively higher for the machine learning target group because that was more, more optimized. And, and then also um, there was a cost saving as well because we pay for every email that we send and, and, and we send more emails in the traditional way and this uh, ta more targeted group was smaller so it was also uh, cheaper and, and, and better conversion rate. So, that was quite easy to show with numbers that, hey, this is how we worked before and this is how we can work now by, by using our data in more 
uh, in intelligent way. Excellent. So we have a few more minutes to wrap up, uh, but I thought it might be nice to wrap up with just a perspective on if you were to start again or give advice for someone who's just starting their journey, what are the, the two, maybe the two pieces of advice you, you'd lead them with to get them on a, with, with your learnings to get them on a positive path? I would have, I actually have been thinking that, that because like I said, I started two years ago and, and the first two initiatives were data catalogs, so making the data visible and data platform. And then I also started building the data engineering team in order to, to get started with the data platform. And it took quite a while before we actually made the decision and then we started the implementation of data catalogs. So if I could start from from the beginning, I would definitely do the data catalog much faster because I think that's definitely the, the most important thing. And then on, on, on the uh, alongside, of course, building the capabilities of actually using the data. But, but having the visibility, I would start that fast. So with that, we're going to wrap the panel. Thank you.